So in today's video, I'm going to preview in Bradford City versus Notts County. And in the second part of today's video, I'm going to bring you guys my Game Week 38 League 2 score predictions. If you do go on to enjoy, please make sure to drop a like on there for me. If you could turn it 80 likes on today's video, that would be massively appreciated. Subscribe if you're new as well. We're now on the road to 9,000 subscribers, so please make sure you are subscribed. If you haven't already, with that post notification bell on, it's free to do so. And it does massively help out. Get your thoughts in as well down in the comment section down below. Let me know down below your score prediction for this match. What would your starting 11 be as well? Would you make any changes from Saturday's 5-1 drumming against Mansfield Town? Firstly, I will say on the game, thank you very much for the support on not only the match day vlog, but the six things that we learned as well. I think it's the first six things we learned to get over a thousand views. It's nearly hit the like target as well. So thank you very much for the support on that. I'm pretty sure the vlog is the highest viewed home vlog of the season as well so thank you all very much for the support it's a shame that it only really not only really comes but the biggest amount of support comes when we obviously get absolutely battered but uh, make sure to drop a like on there for me subscribe if you are new as well let's hope for a better result in this one and let's get into it channel memberships are now cheaper than ever with tier 1 costing just 99p tier 2 has been reduced from 3.99 a month down to 1.99 a month and tier 3 has been reduced from 8.99 a month down to just 4.99 a month. Your support, as always, is massively appreciated. And the more members that we have, the better the content will be. Enjoy the rest of the video. If we start out then with how both teams have got on so far this season, my team Bradford City, we currently sit 15th in the table. After 37 matches, we've got 13 wins, 11 draws, and 13 defeats, scoring 46 goals and conceding at 47, which leaves us on a minus one goal difference and 50 points. Our last couple of matches then have been a loss, a loss, a win, a draw, and a win. Then last couple of matches then being a 5-1 defeat at home to Mansfield Town, a 2-0 defeat at home to Forest Green Rovers, a 3-0 win away at Accrington Stanley, a 1-0 draw at home to Doncaster Rovers, a 1-0 defeat at home to Wickham Wanderers in the Football League Trophy semi-final and a 1-0 win at home at 2 Sutton United. If we compare that then to Notts County, they sit two positions below us in 17th. After 37 matches, they've got 14 wins, 6 draws and 17 defeats, scoring 72 goals, which is the second most in the division, but also considering Seeding 72, which is the joint worst in the in the division alongside at Salford City. So that leaves them on a zero goal difference and 48 points. Their last couple of matches then have been a draw, a loss, a loss, a loss, and a loss. Their last couple of matches then being a 2-2 draw away at Accrington Stanley, a 2-1 defeat away at Crawley Town, and Scott Robertson got sent off in that game. So Notts County fans, let me know down in the comment section down below what type of red card was that? Was it a double yellow? Was it a three-game ban? Let me know that sort of stuff down below because obviously if it is, he will be suspended for for this one. They also had a 2-0 defeat at home to AFC Wimbledon, a 4-3 defeat at home to Sutton United, conceding four goals at home to Sutton is very alarming, and also a 3-1 defeat at home to Crew Alexandra. Obviously, in the reverse fixture, they battered us at 4-2, 4-0 up after not even the halftime whistle, they absolutely destroyed it. Second half, we were a little bit better when we changed formation. We changed away from the 4-4-2, went to some sort of back three. I think we went to a 3-5-2, might have been a 3-4-3, can't remember off the top of my head. I think it was a 3-5-2, and Andy Cook probably could have scored five or six in that game. His XG must have been through the roof, but he had an off day, and in the first half, our defence also had an off day. But a lot has changed since then. We don't really have many defenders available for this one, but now we're going to get into the team that I would go with if I was Graham. Alexander. Now, because we have so many centre halves unavailable for this game, I think it would be quite stupid to stick with the back three. While for the large part we have been pretty good at that, we've changed to the 4 2 3 1 quite a lot recently, especially at home. So I would start with the 4 2 3 1 in this one. Obviously, no JT, he's away on international duty. I think we're trying to get Callum Kavanagh back for this game, but nothing has been confirmed. He's meant to be going away with Islands under 21s, but I have gone with the 4 2 3 1 in this one. In goal, I've gone with Sam Walker. He was one of the very few plays to come away from the game at the weekend with any real credit despite conceding five goals he was an man of the match contender in my opinion he made four or five really really good saves nearly prevented their second and fifth goal as well especially the second goal makes an outstanding save for that he made two really good saves in the second half from Will Swan to keep the score and a little bit more respectable than what I end up finishing so I've gone with him in between the sticks moving on then into my back four at right back I've gone with Brad Halliday how he didn't get a single second of football at the weekend is criminal arguably our player of the year so far in fact pretty comfortably our player of the year so far 
and he was benched in the biggest game of the season at home to top of the league for a central midfielder, former winger to play in his position. It was a baffling decision from Graham Alexander. He's come out and defended that decision as well. Still don't really understand it. Halliday's been excellent for us for the large part this season and while there were some players who gave up at the weekend, whether you're 3-0 up or 8-0 down, Brad Halliday will always give 110% for the shirt so he definitely comes back in and starts at right back. Into my two centre halves then. At first I've gone with Sam Stubbs. He should hopefully be back available for this one. He's missed the last two weeks with that concussion protocol. I think the maximum time for a concussion protocol is 14 days so he should definitely be back available for this one which is big news for us considering we've got no Ash Taylor thankfully no Matty Platt which is a big loss for us and obviously no Tomkinson but he has been quite poor for us I do think recently apart from maybe the game against Accrington Stanley so Stubbs comes back into this one he was very good for us last season in a back four so if we do play that I think it could certainly suit as well and partnering him I've gone with Kieron Kelly I thought at the weekend he had a pretty solid game if I'm honest with you made a really good recovery challenge in that first half when Will Swan looked to be in on goal 1v1 and Kelly right at the last second got his toe in. He won quite a lot of duels as well up against Lucas Aikens. He's a big threat at this level, especially physically. Kelly, I thought just gave 110% and there were a lot of players who gave up but I certainly don't think Kelly was one of them I thought you know his distribution wasn't particularly great but again we're going long up to Tyler Smith no one's distribution up to him was going to be particularly good I felt Kelly was one of the few positives at the weekend so he starts at centre back alongside Sam Stubbs now the reason why I've not gone with the back three as well is I don't want to see someone like a Daniel Yugoke or a Liam Rydaug in that back three I feel like just go with a back four it makes much more sense at left back I've gone with Lewis Richards like I've just mentioned there Liam Rydow got nowhere near good enough. Yes, it's probably his best position and Richards doesn't really suit a back four. I think he's much better in a back three playing as a wing back, but I just feel like because we're going to have to go with a back four in this one, he is still better than Liam Rydow despite it not necessarily being his best position. Into my two central midfielders then. At first, I've gone with Richie Smallwood. He's one of the few players to remain in the starting eleven from the weekend. I just feel like you need a bit of experience, a bit of leadership in there, a bit of quality on the ball as well. He's very good out of possession and he will break up play, so I've gone with him, partnered by Kevin McDonald. No real legs in that midfield. Alex Gilead wouldn't be in my starting eleven. I thought he was really poor at the weekend and could maybe do with a bit of a rest, but McDonald came on after about 25 minutes for Ryder Aug, and I wouldn't say he controlled the game, but whenever he got on the ball, we moved it very well. Our passing was much better. Our pass completion was much better as well, and I just feel like McDonald, if he can give you an hour 65 minutes or something like that I feel like that would be a really positive thing for us because you know when he gets the ball at his feet he very rarely loses it he uses his body very well I think that's going to be key for us against a side as good as Notts County into my front three then behind the striker as the right winger I've gone with Adam Wilson I still don't understand why he's not getting an opportunity to even be on the bench after impressing on off the bench against Doncaster the other week he looks really good in training as well from what we've seen on his Instagram story I feel like we should give him an opportunity to start in this one. I think he played like the last 10 or 15 minutes in reverse fixture, but Wilson just doesn't really seem to be getting a chance under Graham Alexander, and I don't really know why. When you look at someone like Tyreek Wright's performances, which have been shocking, his first touch is abysmal, where when Adam Wilson plays, he gets the ball, he beats his men, gets balls in the box, gets shots off, he's positive with his play. I don't understand why he's not getting an opportunity. When you add on the fact as well that Wilson is our own player, he's here on a long-term contract compared to Tyreek Wright, who isn't, we don't really have much to play for, so why not play your own players? Wilson definitely starts for me as the right winger. As the number 10, I've gone with Bobby Poynton. I needed to get him in this side as well. Someone who you know is going to give 110% because he is a Bradford fan. He probably watched that first half at the weekend from the stands or wherever he was and was absolutely disgusted by it. The amount of plays he were just giving up. I feel like Poynton not necessarily wouldn't have accepted that because, you know, he's a young player. He can't exactly go around and he's screaming at all these senior players. But I feel like Poynton would have given it his all and he's got quality as well, does Bobby Poynton. He's not getting picked just because he's a Bradford fan he's got a lot of quality in there and I feel like Jamie Walker at the weekend really did flatter to deceive yes he was playing slightly out of position but didn't offer enough for me missed an absolute sitter as well so I'm going Bobby Poynton to start in the number 10 and as my left winger I've gone with Harry Chapman he's come off the bench over the last couple of weeks and he's got a couple of assists you know he assisted Tyler Smith's goal against Doncaster assisted at the weekend for Andy Cook and while in the end the goal didn't really mean much it's nice to see an attacking player producing a little bit of output like I mentioned Tyreek 
Blake Wright has been very poor recently. Walker didn't really impress in his minutes that he's had so far since returning from injury. And also Clark Adore has been pretty poor over the last couple of games. I don't think he's been awful. He just hasn't quite been as good as what we know he can be. So maybe you bench him for this one. But Chapman, I feel like, deserves to start again. He was last start, I think, was away at Wrexham where he was really poor. But since then, his impact on off the bench has been pretty positive. So I give him the nod in this one. And as a striker, Andy Cook. Do I need to say it anymore? He's a goal scorer. He's a million times better than Tyler Smith. He offers us an out ball as well. He's excellent at defending set pieces. If Andy Cook is fit and available, I don't understand a world in which he doesn't start this game uh, or any game, if I'm honest with you. I could maybe understand if Jake Young is fit, but he's not. And Tyler Smith is nowhere near the level. Matt Derbyshire should not really be registered as a player anymore. So Andy Cook, for me, should start in this one. On the bench now, for me, I've gone with Colin Doyle, Daniel Yagoke, Alex Gilead, Jamie Walker, Clark Ador, Tyreek Wright and Tyler Smith. On paper, that's a very strong bench. The players currently unavailable are Ash Taylor, Matty Platt, Jonathan Tomkinson, Alex Patterson. Callum Kavanagh is one I'm not sure about. He's meant to be going away with Islands under-21s, but I think we are trying to get him for for tomorrow's match and also Jake Young. So the players who miss out then at through selection would be Liam Rydalg and Matt Derbyshire. Now then we're going to get into my Game Week 38 League 2 score predictions. I mean, I say score predictions, it's score prediction. There is only the one game for us to go through and predict, and it is this one. Bradford City versus Notts County. Two sides in pretty poor form. I'm going with a one-all draw. We always seem to draw one-all at home. It's going to be a frustrating day. I feel like that'd be a pretty positive result for Notts County, considering their form since the turn of the year. I think I'm right in saying they've only won one away game since October in the league. So I can't really see them winning, but I feel like we've got to come out and show a bit of a reaction to the weekend. Fingers crossed we can get the three points though, but I can't predict any type of positive result after what we've seen over the last two matches. But I'm going to leave it there then for today's video. If you have enjoyed, please make sure to drop a like on there for me. If you could turn it 80 likes. As I said at the start of today's video, that would be massively appreciated. Subscribe if you're new as well. We're on the road to 9,000 subscribers, so please make sure you are subscribed. If you haven't already, with that post notification bell on, it's free to do so. And it does massively help out get your thoughts in as well down in the comment section down below let me know down below your score prediction for this match what would your starting 11 be as well would you make any changes from saturday's 5-1 defeat against mansfield town thank you all once again for the support over the last two videos thank you all for watching this one and i'll see you all very soon for another one it'll be tomorrow for the match day vlog peace